Good morning, my unforgettable people, unforgettable men, unforgettable women, and unforgettable you. So here we are again, a uh, beautiful morning, and we're about to read One Small Step Can Change Your Life, The Kaizen Way by Robert Maurer. So uh, we are now in chapter one, Why Ka Kaizen Works. All changes, even positive ones, are scary. Attempts to reach goals through radical and revolutionary means often fail because they heighten fear. But small steps of Kaizen disarm the brain's fear response, stimulating rational thought and creative play. Change is frightening. This human fact is unavoidable. Whether the change is seemingly insignificant, visiting a new nightclub or altering or life altering having a baby this fear of change is rooted in the brain's philosophy, um, physiology and when fear takes hold it can prevent creativity change and success from an evolutionary standpoint the brain is one of the most unusual organs in the human body. Our other organs, heart, the, the heart, liver, intestines, and so on, develop so well that they have remained consistent through the eons of human evolution. But for the last four or five hundred million years, the brain has continued to develop and change. Today, we actually have three separate brains that became that came along as intervals of about one or two hundred million years. One of our challenges as humans is to develop harmony among these different brains so as to avoid physical and emotional illness. At the bottom of the brain is the brain stem. It's about five hundred million years old and is called the reptilian brain in fact it does look like an alligator's whole brain the reptilian brain wakes up in the morning sends you off to sleep at night and reminds your heart to beat sitting at the top of your brain is the main or midbrain also known as the mammalian brain Roughly 300 million years old, old, this is the brain possessed in one form or another by all mammals. Midbrain regulates the body's internal temperature, houses our emotions, and governs our fight or flight responses that keep us alive in the face of danger. The third part of the brain is the cortex, which begin which began to develop about 100 million years ago. The cortex, which wraps around the rest of the brain, is responsible for the miracle of being human. Civilization, art, science, all reside there. It's where our rational thoughts and creative impulses take place. When we want to make a change or jumpstart the creative process, we need we need access to the cortex. This three brain arrangement doesn't always function smoothly. Our rational brain direct, our rational brains direct us to lose weight, but when we eat a bag of chips on one sitting, or we try to come up with a creative pitch for a new pro uh, project, and our minds go blank as, as fresh concrete, When you start to change but experience a block, you can often blame the midbrain for gumming up the works. The midbrain is where you'll find a structure called the enigma, is ab absolutely crucial to our survival. It controls the fight and flight response. An alarm mechanism that we share with all other mammals 
It was designed to alert parts of the body for action in the face of immediate danger. One way it accomplishes this is to slow down or stop other functions such as rational and creative thinking that could interfere with the phys uh, physical ability to run or fight. The fight or flight response makes a lot of sense. If a lion is charging you, the brain does not want you to waste time carefully thinking through the problem. Instead, the brain simply shuts down non-essential functions such as digestion, sex desire, and uh, thought processes and sends your body directly into action. Thousands of years ago, when we roamed the jungles in the forests of the savanna with mammals, this mechanism came in handy every time humans put themselves in jeopardy by straying from the safe and familiar. Since we possess bodies that did not run very fast and lack the strength of animals that wanted to prey upon us or uh, prey upon it and that did not see or smell well, this, this timidity was crucial. The fight or flight response is still vital today. For instance, if a car on a highway heads the wrong way down your lane or you need to escape a burning building, the real problem with the enigma is its fight or flight response today is that it sets off alarms or alarm bells whenever you want to make a departure from your usual safe routines. The brain is designed so that any new challenge or opportunity or desire triggers some degree of fear. Whether the challenge is a new job or just meeting a new person, the enigma alerts parts of the body to prepare for action and our access to the cortex. The thinking part of the brain is restricted and sometimes shut down. Remember my client, Julie? The one who marched in front of the TV set for one minute every night? Clearly, Julie was afraid for her health. That's why she came to the doctor in the first place. But her enormous responsibilities led to, to, led to other less obvious fears that, com that, completed, that competed for her attention. She was afraid of losing her job, afraid of her children's safety, afraid she wasn't a good mother. And she later confessed, afraid of disappoint, disappointing her physician if she didn't follow the doctor's orders. In fact, when a previous doctor had urged her to exercise strenuously several times a week, her fear of letting him down sh uh, shared a crowded stage with all her other worries, leaving her so overwhelmed that she failed to exercise at all. Even worse, ashamed to have disobeyed the doctor's instruction. She stopped seeking medical care altogether. Instead, she relied on television and junk food for comfort. You may have experienced this phenomenon in the form of test anxiety. The more important you believe the test to be, the more you have riding on the outcome and more fear you feel. And when you, fe when you find it difficult, or, and then you find it difficult to concentrate. An answer <clears throat> you might have had down cold the night before seemed to have withdrawn itself from your memory banks. Large goal, fear, access, cortex, restricted, failure. Small goal, fear bypass, cortex engage, success. Some lucky people are able to get around this problem by turning their fear into another emotion, excitement. The bigger the challenge, the more excited and productive and thrilled they become. You probably know a few people like this. Come to life when they sense a challenge. But for the rest of us, big goals triggers big fear. 
just as it happened with our ancestors on the savannah. The brain restricts the cortex in order to get us moving away from the line, but now the line is a piece of paper called a test or a goal of losing weight, finding a mate, or creative sales results, or cre creating sales results. Creativity and purposeful, purposeful action are suppressed exactly when we need, need them the most. The little steps of Kaizen are kind of stealth solution to this qu uh, quality of the brain. Instead of spending years in counseling to understand why you're afraid of looking great or achieving your professional goals, you can use Kaizen to go around or under these fears. Small, easily achievable goals, such as picking up and storing just one paper clip on a chronically messy desk, let, let you tiptoe right past the enigma, keeping it asleep and, and unable to set off alarm bells. As your small steps continue and your cortex starts working, the brain begins a creative software for the desired change, actually laying down new nerve pathways and building new habits. Soon your resistance to change begins to weaken. Where once you might have been daunted by cha change, your new mental software will, will, will have you soon moving towards your ultimate goal at the, at the pace that may well exceed your expectations. That's exactly what happened to Julie. After a few weeks, very limited exercise, she was shocked to find herself exercising even when she didn't have to. Those first small steps laid down the neural uh, networks for enjoying the change. Kaizen helps you defeat the fear of change in another way. When you are afraid, the brain is programmed either to run or attack. Not always the most practical options. If you've always wanted to be a songwriter, for example, you will, you will not achieve your goals if you get up from the piano keyboard out of fear or create a, create a blockage <clears throat> and spend a night watching television instead. Small actions, say writing just three notes, satisfying your brain's need to do something and soothe its distress. As the alarms die down, you'll renew access to the your renewed access to the cortex and get uh, get some of your creative juices flow. How small steps become giant leaps. Your brain is programmed to resist change. But by taking small steps, we effectively wire, you effectively wire your nervous system so that it does, it does the following. Unsticks you from a creative block bypasses the flight or or the fight or flight responses creates new connections between neurons so that your brain enthusiastically takes over the process of change and you you progress rapidly towards your goal stress or fear while the modern medical name for the feeling produced by a new chat challenge or a large goal is stress for countless generations it went by the old familiar name of of fear even now i found that most of that most successful people are the ones who gaze at fear unblinkingly instead of relying on the term like anxiety stress nervousness they speak openly about being frightened by their responsibilities and challenges. Here's Jack Welch, the past CEO of General Electric. Everyone who is running uh, something goes, goes home at night and wrestles with that same fear. I am, I am going to be the one who blows this place up. Chuck Jones, the creator of Pepe Le Pew, and Wiley Coyote 
emphasize that fear is an important factor in any creative work. And Sally Ride, the astronaut, is, a, is unafraid of talking plainly of fear. All adventures, especially into new territories, are scary. I was puzzled why so many remarkable people pr prefer the word fear to stress or anxiety. The answer came came to me one day while I was working at the UCLA School of Medicine observing physicians in the course of their training. I was again followed I was again following one of our family pra practice resident physicians through the course of her day in the health center. Seeing children and adults for a wide variety of uh, melodies that bring people to a primary care physician. I noticed that when adults came to see the physician and talk about their emotional pain, they chose words such as stress, anxiety, depress depression, nervous. When I observed children talk about their feelings, they talked about being scared, sad, or afraid. In my conclusion that the reason for the difference in word choice had less to do with the symptoms and more to do with expectations. Children assumed their feelings were normal. Children knew they lived in a world they cannot control. They have no say in whether their parents are in a good mood or bad, or whether their teachers are nice or mean. They understand that fear is a part of their life. Adults, I believe, assume that if they are living correctly, they can control the events around them. When fear does appear, it seems all wrong. So adults prefer to call it by the name for psychiatric disease. Fear becomes a disorder, something a tidy label of stress or anxiety. This approach to fear is unproductive. If your expectation is that a well-run life should always be orderly, you are setting yourself up for panic and defeat. If you assume that the new job or relationship or health goals is supposed to be easy, you will feel angry and confused when fear arises, and you'll do anything to make it disappear. We may not even be aware of the, uh, the exaggerated, depressed measure or desperate measures we take to get rid of fear. This, this common but counterintuitive phenomenon is captured in a familiar joke. The drunk is on his hands and knees looking for his keys under the streetlight. A policeman approaches him and asks, What are you doing? The drunk replies in a slurred voice, looking for my keys. The police furthers inquire, uh, further inquiries, where did you drop them? The drunk said, over there, pointing to the end of the city block. The police scratches his head and says, if you dropped your keys over there, why are you looking for them over here? And the drunk replies, because the light is better over here. <laughs> when life gets scary and difficult, we tend to look for solutions in places where it is easy or at least familiar to do so. And not in the dark, uncomfortable places where real solutions might lie. So the single person who fears intimacy might change jobs or cities working to improve an already good career rather rather venture into deep end of the pool close close to home where intimacy might be experienced people who are not taking care of their health or who are not who are ignoring an unsatisfying marriage might purchase a new home or a second home and focus on that adventure instead People with low self-esteem might leap into cosmetic surgery or a crash diet and exercise regime, focusing on calorie intake and, and food groups rather than facing 
themselves and their self-critical natures. Courage is resistance to fear. Mastery of fear, not absence of fear. Mark Twain. But if you expect fear, you can approach it in a compassionate manner. It helps to remember that when we want to change, rational thoughts don't always guide actions. And fear can well up in the most ordinary of places. Let's say that you've been that you've been late to work during the last couple of weeks. One morning you wake up and make a very rational solution. Today will be the day I finally arrive at the office and on time. But it's possible that fear you're not even aware of, perhaps of confronting a dominating coworker, will stall your brain in its track leading you to make an extra phone call or do one or more load of laundry before leaving the house. In effect, fear can cause you unconsciously to sabotage your best intentions. Don't let these common roadblocks to change make make you feel so guilty or frustrated that you give up your attempts to improve. Conflict is a condition of being human. If people could control their actions easily, we'd be a much gentler species. And the front page of the morning newspaper would look a lot different. Instead, use times of difficulty to remember that fear is the body's gift, alerting us to a challenge. The more we care about something, the more we dream, the more fear shows up. Think about fear in a way that can help us feel less distraught. During the rough patches, understand that fear is normal and a natural sign of ambition. Makes us more likely to hold on to hope and optimism. Qualities that increase our willingness to take the kinds of small steps that slip past or right past the fear instead of raging at ourselves for being late yet again or sadly concluding that we are simply incapable arriving at work on time we can gently acknowledge the fear and its effect on us then we can quietly and gingerly take a small step such as simply imagining a pleasant conversation with a difficult co-worker Eventually, small steps like these will build fresh habits into our brains. In the upcoming chapter, I'll show you the small steps of Kaizen in detail. With with these, fear may be faced and even transformed. Well, my friends, that is the conclusion of chapter one. Thank you for joining me today. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. So if you oh, if you like this uh, if you like this um, this book series, please hit this the subscribe and also the like button. And if you know anybody that is trying to accomplish big things, feeling a little bit frustrated or they just don't know where to start, uh, send them this video and uh, watch all the other chapters as well. Uh, incredible incredible book and then if you want to get the book for yourself then go down below in the description and you can get it off of Amazon so uh, I'll leave it at that have yourself an incredible day and keep being unforgettable take care namaste